There are a lot of ways to get your voice heard as a content creator, but if you're just starting out and the bevy of options don't seem to make much sense to you, let's go over all of these microphone styles and talk about the pros and cons of each so you can make your decision easily. First off, big props to Rode for sponsoring this video and providing most of the mics here for this explainer. This is the mic. It's the one we all know and love. They come as condensers or dynamics and both work just as well, but have different needs for being run properly. These are also the OG mics. These are art producing units that have been perfected over the years since the original carbon microphone. Don't use one of those though. They sound absolutely horrible. These mics all work best when positioned close to the mouth, each one having its own sweet spot, but generally within six inches for the best quality of sound. Now, it is the go-to for a lot of new content creators as a way to get the best quality audio possible, which is the biggest strength that this microphone has. Out of the available options here, it will have the best sound quality for your voice most of the time. Other benefits is that it can be readjusted on the fly while you're delivering your content which may be necessary as you shift in your seat or just move around in general. It's also one of the most cost efficient of the available styles of microphones, even going as far as getting a USB version. Now, these mics are also super versatile. Need a mic for a podcast or perhaps you're looking into getting voice work? Well, you already have the most important tool of the job. You want to do music? Well, again, you have the microphone and frankly, any mic will work for this, especially in the XLR range. The worst part about this mic is, well, yeah, this. It is big and bulky and it has to be in frame with you. The quality of sound drops off significantly as it gets farther away from your face. So if you're looking for an off camera solution for your videos, this is not the microphone for you. So then let's recap the pros best sound quality of the three types, most cost efficient, and it's super versatile. The cons are it is super bulky and it has to stay close to your face, which leads us into the polar opposite, the lav mic. Well, the standard mic is all up in your face and ready for action. The lavalier mic is more about staying behind the scenes. And this is the lavalier two by road. It's understated and it's been the go-to for TV and movie production for years. Lav mics are when you don't want to go loud and proud, but you require discretion. No, no, the other kind of discretion. Now, lav mics have been in use since 1932, but again, like the carbon mics, I don't think the early iterations are going to work out for your project. They're used everywhere that mics are better heard and not seen. And not just on TV and movies, with theater being a massive lav supporter. With period pieces specifically, where it would ruin the immersion to see a microphone. These things can be placed and no one is the wiser. Which is one of the interesting misconceptions about this lav mic. It can literally be hidden anywhere. Under clothing, under your fake skin, even in your hair. Media folks have been getting creative with this thing for years. They are amazing for times that you just can't have a stationary microphone. Perhaps you're demonstrating something you need to move around a bunch, or perhaps just the sight of a standard type of microphone just flat out ruins the shot. These little things are amazing. The best feature of these, no matter where you move and what you're doing, you're never off mic. That's the power of the lav mic. That said, the sky is the limit for pricing, with some professional models costing you more than a standard mic. And that's just for the microphone. If you want to go wireless, the costs only goes up. Rode offers this system, the Rode Wireless Go 2. That's one of the best options for price. Also, other issues can crop up as well as these mics are omnidirectional, meaning they pick up sound from every direction, which is necessary for them to operate as needed, but that can have unintended consequences in the wrong room or if you aren't the only one talking close to the microphone. Another big drawback is sound quality. Unless you're making a big splash, you won't be getting the same quality of audio from a lav mic that you'll be getting from a standard mic. And even with the top of the line lav mic, it still might not be as good, depending on your mic placement. Of course, in situations where a lav mic is necessary, you're probably gonna be forgiven for that, as even a cheap lav will sound a billion times better than your on-camera mic. So, as a recap, the pros of the lav are discretion, 
it will never tell your secrets. Ultimate versatility, doesn't matter where you're facing, if the mic is placed properly, your voice will stay the same quality. Now the cons, it can be cost prohibitive, especially if you want higher quality mic systems. And sound quality can be suspect, even in the best case scenario. This is easily the least best sounding mic among the three. I think that's the best way to put it. And with all that said, we move on to the boom mic or the shotgun mic. Now we have the Rode NTG3, kind of the in-between, right in between the standard mic and the lav. Now these have been the go-to for Hollywood and TV since the 60s. They're specifically meant to pick up sound from in front. Now, there are several types of microphones like this, including the boom mic, the short boom mic, and pencil mics. Now, these are called boom mics because they're utilized on the end of boom poles and are used to pick up dialogue from a relative distance. And in the hands of a good boom operator, they can sound like magic. These can be the best sounding audio for many content creators and are even used in voiceover settings. And in a lot of instances, they can be used off camera. But despite all of these positives, there are some drawbacks here. While these are magic in the hands of a good boom operator, some might have a hard time staying on mic. Remember, I said they're very directional. That means if you move too much, the audio might dip and it's very easy to do. Which means if you're doing anything other than a talking head video like this one, uh, this might not be the mic for you. Also, there is an issue called warble. Now, it's a phase issue that kind of just wrecks your audio, and it can happen if you don't have decent treatment or even just an off specific size of the room you're in. Won't get too deep into it, but there are shorter shotguns and even pencil mics that you can use to avoid that issue. The one trade off with that, though, is that the shorter the tube, the less capable it is at off axis rejection. So you do have to keep that in mind. Also, most of the time you can fix the warble issue with mic placement, so there is that. The only other thing that might be an issue could be cost. Now, there are a ton of great options at entry, so it is kind of a half con. But as you move up to the professional series of booms, it can be rather cost prohibitive. One thing I can say is in most professional shooting scenarios, a mix of lavs and shotguns are used. So there's always a backup. And there are also scenarios where a boom mic just won't work, like a really wide shot in a movie. So then, to recap the pros of the shotgun microphone. Great sound, even from a distance. Off-camera approach without the diminished sound quality, and it's versatile, as shotgun mics can be used for other things like voiceover or foley creation. The cons, however, they are really easy to go off axis. Possible warble, but that really isn't too big of an issue with the right setup and possibly somewhat cost prohibitive. So realistically, there is no one perfect setup for everyone, meaning no one microphone is gonna be better or worse than the others. And it all depends on what you're using it for. I really hope this helps you make up your mind with which mic works for you. Again, big shout out to Rode for sponsoring this video with all the gear that made this kind of a video possible. Cheers.